Hello, this video is about a brand new photo and video editing tool, but for the sake of clarity, this video is also sponsored by manufacturer of said photo and video editing tool. Now, I don't take money to do camera and lens reviews because that's my core content and that would just ruin the impartiality of all of that core content, right? But this is different because it's an accessory and also they haven't asked me to review it. They haven't asked me to say particularly nice things about it. They just want me to show what it does. So that's what I'm doing in this video. Let's go. Yeah, first of all, I should really have mentioned what the product actually is. It's the Loop Deck CT. Yay, I'm off to a great start. You've probably seen the Loop Deck Plus before. That's the keyboard thing. That's bigger. This one, much smaller. It's almost pocket size if you've got massive pockets. It's like a big calculator. It's actually more like a drum machine or mixing desk. You've got your bass, your mids and your trebles. Anyway, yeah, Loop Deck CT basically is a whole load of buttons and dials and knobs and twiddly things to hopefully make your photo and video editing workflow a bit easier, right? Bit different to Loop Deck Plus in that it doesn't have those wheel things, but it does have a massive knob. Yeah, it's a massive knob. Anyway, it's supposed to be used in conjunction with a keyboard and mouse, so I'm just going to plonk it right here and it's small enough so that if you're an idiot like me and you're using a Peli case as a desk, it will fit your laptop and this thing right here. All right, let's plug it in. USB-C, shove it in there to install software. Now we've got the Loop Deck software installed. Let's open it up. The first thing you know is, oh look, Pac-Man. Pac-Man's there. You can't help but notice the big fat knob. It's quite smooth and weighted. That's not the sponsorship money talking. I actually mean it, yeah? Okay, software started. Oh, oh, by the way, I'll be giving one of these away. Complete brain fart. But anyway, back to the software. As you can see, you've got different applications here. After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, Premiere Pro. Most of the biggies, right? Okay, so that's where you customize your setup. But let's start the software first. Let's open Photoshop. Boom. Right, the first thing I know is when I start this thing up is that the buttons at the top, which look like just buttons, it's actually like the touch bar on the MacBook Pro right here. So you see, you see all the icons. What you see there is what you see on there. You know, right there, right, right there. Yeah, and it's the same with a massive knob there. But apart from that, what else have you got? You've got six toy knobs here, you've got eight circular buttons and two banks of six buttons on the side of your big fat knob. Now the requirements, they want me to show how to use this thing in my whole photo editing workflow. The whole process of my photo editing workflow is actually quite simple, quite minor tweaks. But let me show you anyway. You can have a number of different workspaces assigned to these circular buttons. Now the whole idea with workspace is that you can have it set up for each step of your editing process. First step would be to rate the photo. First workspace. Okay, so a whole load of photos here. You can just scroll through the photos with the big massive knob. I mean, of course, the whole idea with this is to make scrolling through, rating, zooming in, checking your photos quicker. The touch screen on the dial has two star, three star. So, okay, two star, three star. Okay, on the touch pad here, you can filter them by star rating, which is what we'll do. Okay, boom. But anyway, going back to the big wheel thing, I find them useful for a number of things. This knob here and the touchpad screen, whatever you call it, it's really just for the fine adjustment. I'm super picky when it comes to making tiny precise adjustments. I just have to have it exactly right to the like decimal point. Hate it when I move the mouse and it just goes too far. Using the wheel is like the most satisfying way of making those tiny little adjustments like with cropping and rotating. And also, like just for example with the color, is to get that very fine micro adjustments to change the color and hue useful when i'm picking a particularly garish color for stuff like text over a photo so that would be the first step rating rotating which you can do here sorting so yeah the next step would be just to adjust exposure shadows highlights just to bring back that you know can bring back the highlights a little bit a bit, bit more detail on the shadows bring that out and color temperature but okay, let me customize a couple of things first. You can change what these button, touch bar, button things do as well. Okay, and your knob here, that can be customized as well. It's, it's like a cheese. Let's, let's customize our cheddar. You, you've got search function, you can search for, I don't know. Uh, let's get rid of these ones. All right, you, you can have a, a wheel and you can just make a simple adjustment like exposure. 
and to change your, your, your highlights. Yep, so you can have the wheel to just adjust things like so. Mainly in Photoshop, I'm gonna be smashing the lasso or pen tool to get rid of those annoying little details that I don't want. Content aware film or just the healing tool or clone stamp. Oh, and that's where these little twiddly dials come in handy. Right, oh yes, and you can adjust the size of your tool <laughs> With your, with, your, with your small knob up the top there, you can adjust the size of your tool. More importantly, the hardness of your tool. And within, and within one workspace, you can have two sets of tools as well. Sometimes when I'm shooting image, I don't think of the final image as color, but black and white. But of course, I don't have fancy like getting monochrome. So that would be another workspace. This was shot back in 2000, I think I've noted it down on my Instagram, I think it was like 10 years ago with D70, loads of noise. But anyway, let's change that to black and white. You know, actually I think I quite like the highlights kind of blown there. It's, it's a nice contrast. Yeah, but on my interactive chat, I've got the black and white filter option, red, orange, yellow, just like adding color filters in traditional black and white film photography, or can adjust those color channels using the dials. But otherwise, I think I'll go with the image just like this. And yeah, so it's, the final workspace is just for exporting and saving. There's a save button here next to the undo button. But yeah, save, export, save for web. And there we are. Now you're probably asking how much does this thing cost? It costs, how much does it cost? It costs, 460 pounds. So there we are. I'll be giving one of these away just by answering this question. Would you like one? Comments below. So that's the Loop Deck CT and just some of the features that will be used for the photo editing workflow. Of course, my workflow is quite basic. It's quite simple, very minor tweaks. So really I'm just using a fraction of the features that you can find on CD, but yeah, you can use it with different software, which I can use with Final Cut Pro, which is nice and I'll be finding out how to use it later. But today, it's just photo editing and stuff. So, hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye-bye.